All right. Um, hello, everybody again. Thank you for coming to um, our meeting today. Uh, it's a panel discussion of building a life in the US, and it's going to be led by our wonderful Jennifer Rekletasse. I will introduce myself very quickly. My name is Paulina Wolf, and I am honored to work with Jennifer. Uh, and I am part of uh, this community too. We came here two years ago with my husband. He's a postdoc at MIT. And I am now working with Jennifer for this beautiful 50th anniversary this year of Spots and Burners Connect, yay. And this is our last, um, kind of a last uh, Zoom uh, during the whole um, uh, events because we had like a, like a, a series, like a few of them. Um, and this is dedicated uh, to you, people who really had time to and had a chance to stay uh, in the US. And we are really wondering um, and wondering like how uh, your experience was because the, the whole uh, the whole point of this meeting is to show our newcomers um, to like how how it is how it is like, to, to, to give them a chance to ask all the questions they have and to, to uh, give a chance to you to talk um, a little bit. So yeah, and um, we have a great celebration in April 22nd, 23rd. I'm gonna tell about it later, but now I wanna give a chance to Jennifer to finally speak. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Paulina. I feel just so, I mean, I know, after so many years that spouses and partners connect is magical and whenever i have a need uh the talent arrives and that has happened with many of you i've had that experience and uh paulina is just so her you know her background in cultural programming and museum exhibits was just like the perfect fit for what we needed for the 50th so i'm just so thrilled um, that she came to us and she was willing to share all of her expertise and skill with us so thank you colleen that's been such a joy to work with you and have you with us um Okay, I think um, I'm getting some background noise. So maybe if everyone could mute, unless we're talking, unless you're talking, that would be super helpful. Thank you. Um, okay, so uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of our alums who have stayed in the US after their arrival at MIT. Um, some of them for varying lengths of time um, and are living in different locations um, around the country. And um, I'm how the I'm gonna run this like I usually run a panel, though I've never done that with 10 people. So we'll see how it goes. But um, usually what I do is I like to like throw out a couple questions. I'll probably call on someone to get them started. Then if someone else like has a has a comment or wants to add to that, like just raise your hands and we'll have you unmute and share. And then for our our current members, I'd love for you to like if you you know then when I'm done sort of facilitating, we'll open a little bit for questions from you or you can start putting questions in the chat send a question to Paulina if you want her to ask it for you. And then I'm gonna to try to keep my eye on the time because I'd love to do some breakout rooms if we can, um, but let's see how we go. Um, okay, so my first question by raise of hands for my dear alums. So some of you came to the US sort of knowing maybe that you were gonna stay and some of you when you came to MIT didn't know where you were going to go next. So get, raise of hands if you did not know where you were going to go next after your MIT experience. Okay, okay, oh, okay. all right. That's like eight out, of, eight out of 10, I think. All right, so um, gosh, who do I want to hear from first? Um, Giselle, you're right next to me. You're right at the kind of corner across from me. So I want to hear about how that decision to stay 
So you came, you didn't know what was going to happen after MIT. Yeah, we came and yeah, we came for two years and we were open to everything, but basically it was not the idea to stay, but then uh, we decided to stay for a year because uh, Sandro got a very nice offer. Uh, so we say, okay, let's stay and finish to pay MIT so we don't have any debts. But this is what he did. Like the first year we finished paying everything and we were like free. But with this, this was the idea. But then uh, he started a company with uh, some people that he was working uh, in aerospace and astronautics. Uh, they were doing our research uh, for the next, next Mars, Mars mission. And then this, uh, this, was, this uh, technology was applied for the company that he started um like i don't know 11 years ago 12 years ago that uh, he sold the company like two years ago in 2019 to roku so yeah and now he works for roku but yeah this is how we stay like and, and the beginning was like like play because we're like only four people when well, the one that started with the startup and then the company grew so much and and then yeah the years went going like on and, and and at some point i realized that we were not leaving not not like soon <laughs> so yeah and then my kids now they are half 16 and the other one is 12 and they were born and raised here so then you realize that yeah you made a life here and have 18 years had happened <laughs> We just applied to the citizenship. We were like in doubt even for that. And we just decided that if we have been spending all these years here, it was time to, uh, yeah, to be American. So we just applied that, yeah. So at what point did you sort of go, oh, we're, oh, we're staying? It, it sounded a little uh, bit like it snuck up on you. I was like, uh, when yeah when the company is like everything is start like a, a like um like a game because we said we don't have nothing to lose like with the startup because we still have our staff in pro so is it, what is the worst that had to happen go back we still have our staff there and yeah it was like we didn't have nothing to lose so everything is start like a game and we didn't imagine that it will grow like so much and will be like successful that successful because you know startup you never know you like can go go wrong or can like yeah you it's like a yeah it's like a playing the lottery you know basically yeah. uh but yeah and i probably had like when we were here like seven years or something like that I, or six seven i remember that i said to sandra we are not living here so uh probably we should apply to the green card because uh and then we just have, we apply for the like, green card but late late we were like okay you know what probably we should apply or i don't know six i don't remember but then you know what i was always thinking that i was going back because i have all my stuff in a container in lima and i didn't want to take my stuff here uh because i thought that as soon as it arrived i need to go back so why i will take it so I, I decided to to take the things 10 years later when I said, you know what, we are staying. So yeah. Okay. What what was in this storage container? Like are you can you well, like everything because we, we have been married like nine years before we came to the States. So we have like a life, like a house and everything. So there was like furniture and things that uh, at some point I, I went there and say, okay, what, what I really want. So I, yeah, I put like some stuff and other things like I, yeah, I leave them there for what, whoever want them. But there were things like that were like special for me, like family things or yeah, that I really want with me. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I bring them I, I, like, oh, I, like pictures, like all oh, your, your story was there. My story was there. So yeah, that's the reason yeah, we decided to bring them here. Yeah. Um, Roberta, I feel like maybe would I uh, be correct in saying maybe the the staying snuck up on you a bit? So um, listening to Giselle, I have something in common and something totally different. Like, uh, first of all, I arrived in the US after a week of, from my marriage. 
So <laughs> even if I have um, my house over there and I didn't even open some of the wedding gifts, you know, because I knew that I was coming here. I was not bringing here because uh, we were staying one year, maybe two, because uh, my husband was already here from a while, so he was finishing his PhD. And uh, I wasn't a leave on, from my job in Italy. And uh, I didn't know that then uh, he was uh, going for the postdoc, research scientist, and more and more. So um, there was always the feeling that we were going back. And uh, I, in the beginning, I actually didn't want to come here because for me to leave my family and, you know, my house, my life, my friends and everything, it was a lot. But, you know, one year of experience uh, it was also exciting. And I do remember my husband that was going to say, I know you, you are going to love it. You know, you are going to meet a lot of people from everywhere. You are really going to enjoy it. And um, what happened to us is, was that after eight years for, for me here, we had the opportunity to go back to Italy. And it was a really good opportunity. So, um, and I was, you know, happy and sad because I was going home, but I was living a lot that I knew here. And I had my kids here. I had experience with my, we were saying my Cambridge family. Just a second, sorry. Sorry, I have some noise in the chat. Um, so when I went back, uh, it was a shocking experience. And I remember what Jennifer say, remember to be ready to have your cultural shock reverse when you go back to your country. And I was missing some of the uh, life that I was having here. And um, even there, so I was thinking we were going to stay there for good, but again, we had the opportunity to return to US. So right now, this is my second section of eight years. So I did eight here, two in Italy, and eight here now. And this second time has been a totally different experience for me because I arrived that I already knew what I could find. And uh, the kids were already used to some of the, uh, of course, they are born here. Though, so for them, it was anyway to go home, even if they were missing the new friends that they were able to, um, to have over the two years over there. And um, I always have the feeling, so I understand just like what she say, we have our stuff there, we have our house there, because I have the same. I still have some of the wedding, gift to open <laughs> you know, I, so and that makes also me think that maybe some of the things that i have are there i don't need it because i'm surviving really well without um so and i always have the feeling uh, uh that i don't know what i'm going to be when i will be older you know because I feel that I'm from more than one place uh, right now. So both places are home for me. And uh, when I'm there, I'm missing something here. When I'm here, I'm missing something there. And as Giselle say, the kids, um, are, they start to be uh, more, they are more and more connected with US. You know, they, of course, they have family in Italy, but they, uh, I can, so I'm keeping practicing on understanding the American culture and learning from the American life. But for the kids, you can say that they are American. You know, what makes really the difference is that they are having the culture, not only from family, but from the um, school, from the friends. So, and um, so um, I don't know. I, I sometimes say, what am I going to be when I will be old? I don't picture myself old on here, but the reality is that I don't picture myself old at all. <laughs> so I have no idea, right? You feel just always like you are. Um, but it's true. Um, I was actually talking with uh, um, one of the postdocs the other day. We were talking about these things about uh, stay here, going home. And it made me think because you say, I'm going to be where my family will be. And they say, which family? Your original family or your future family? Because 
thinking about me, I'm sure if we stay, keep staying here, the kids will want to stay here, right? So what am I going? And the only things that I think sometimes is that um, if I was maybe not coming back to the US and I was staying there with the kids, uh, even if the kids were going in one region or another region of Italy, in few hours, I was able to see them. But in the US, uh, when your kids will start to go to college, it could be really far away, right? So, um, so in conclusion, I cannot say that I have the feeling that we decided to stay here for good, but uh, it is what is happening. And, uh, and I feel home anyway. It, it really, I, like, I'm, I'm sensing this idea of that. In some ways, you, like, have to, you, you keep choosing it, right? Like, it's a decision that maybe you keep having to make as circumstances shift. I'm curious about other people. Does any other, anyone else have something they want to say about this idea? Like, the decision to say how it came, sneaking up on you, still making that decision. Does anybody else have those feelings? The thoughts? I see Toshiko nodding her head. What would you say, Toshiko? Hi. Um, so I'm, we're same way. We, we've been in US uh, almost 25 years this summer. And uh, first, um, first uh, several years, we were thinking that we are going to go back to Japan. Um, but then um, the situation has changed. Um, before, many Japanese uh, researchers would come to US, do postdoc uh, several years, like four or five years, submit some papers to a journal, and then they get position in Japan. Like uh, uh, if you're lucky, full professor, if you are not, then still you get a uh, associate professor position. But while we were there, the situation has changed and um, we were not gonna get that position. I mean, my husband wouldn't get that position. So we said, okay, <laughs> let's find some, some position here uh, in US. So he applied to um, many universities and he finally got a uh, offer from uh, Washington University in St. Louis. And uh, since then we are there. <laughs> and during that stay, uh, so, so we, we've been there since uh, 2001. And uh, so during that, our stay there, um, we were, had some, uh, chances like offers from uh, Japanese universities, uh, but uh, it's a little bit uh, hiring um, uh, process is a little bit different from here in the US, uh, in Japan. Uh, what uh, they, they have to go through like a, a, a conference among the professors and then they decide final decision. And you never know what uh, they will choose <laughs> until the last moment. And so we didn't have a chance. Uh, so, so we said, okay, we'll stay in the US. <laughs> and, um, and so we are, we are like that. Um, you know, as the situation goes, we, we you know, shift. But actually, uh, uh, funny thing is I, I miss more Japan. I miss Japan more, and uh, but my husband he he's happier in the U.S. Uh, the environment, work environment, is much uh, better, more practical. You know, it's more straightforward. No uh, poly politics, <laughs> and uh, so he's happier in the U.S. So uh, wherever he's happy, I. I you know, I, I stay with him. And so, you know, that's why we're in the States. <laughs> so many different paths, right? So many, yeah. like this idea of choosing and 
and some way like decisions were made for you, right? Right, right. Options were there or not there right. and that really shaped yeah. your path. Yeah. yeah. So right now we are in Osaka. Uh, uh, we, we were in Kobe uh, only like 30 minutes away by train. Uh, he had a lab there and we had a five, I mean, he had a five year project and which ended this March. And uh, so he was he, um, there to wrap up his lab. And uh, he also had another uh, lab in Osaka. And uh, that one was uh, cut in half, like cut in short. <laughs> it ended this year as well. And so he had to wrap up. So I think the path <laughs> is still not, our path is still not here in Japan. <laughs> so, and uh, he, he still have some something in Tokyo, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I'm I am curious, and I want to hear from you in a bit again, Toshiko. But um, Adriana, I want to jump to you because mm -hmm. I think that you've lived into multiple places in the a couple of different places yes. in the U.S. So tell yeah. tell about your journey from MIT and where the places you went after. So uh, we stayed at MIT three years and my husband was working at a researcher. He was not a student, so he was he had a job there as a researcher. And after three years, he decided we need to get something more stable. We need to get a green card to see if you're going to stay here in the US. So he decided to change jobs and to go to, a, to work for a company. And that company was in Connecticut. So it was our first move to Connecticut, to Glastonbury. And um, after 12 years there, I had my kids there. And after 12 years, we moved to North Carolina, to Wake Forest, close to Raleigh. And, he, and then it, it all started. He worked there for three years. No, two and a, we stayed there two and a half years. And then we moved to Minneapolis and then we moved back here to North Carolina, where I am now in Charlotte in a different city. So every three years we were moving. So poor kids were like moving, getting to different schools, high school. It was tough on them, on us, on me too, but my husband like got better jobs every time and we had to experience the Midwest and the South which I love. <laughs> I thought I would never like get over Boston, but I finally did. <laughs> so with kids, I think it's much better when you are in a suburban more setting, you know, other than Boston. Boston was really hard. If I had to have my kids there, it would have been really hard to, to have like a stroller on the street or to go to take the kids to school is really hard. I think when you have kids in Boston, but we didn't so it was nice while while we didn't we didn't have kids and then moving and then buying our first house in connecticut growing our kids there the kids grew there and then moving to north carolina was a it was a great experience i really yeah i'm glad we moved so much in the end i think just not staying in the same place you know and having to experience all that and meeting different people and different parts of the country what and did you when you came to MIT did you know that you would stay in the U.S. what was the plan when you first moving was a very hard decision decision to decide to move because we had the option to stay he was he was not coming here as a student he was just like okay. it was a job yeah. so he already had a job in Brazil as a professor so quitting that and it was a very good job Quitting that to come to MIT, it meant, it meant that we kind of have to start everything again in a way. We had just get married, got married and we didn't have anything. I moved here with two suitcases, right? <laughs> to start my new life. I don't have a place to live. I have to find, a, find an apartment. I have to, you know, put furniture inside this apartment and start our new, our new life. And so after the three years that we spent at MIT from 98 to 2000, right? We, the decision of going back wasn't really a decision because 
things were not good over there in Brazil. We didn't, he would have to get maybe a lesser job than he had before, you know? And then here in the US, things were progressing. He was getting like making more money, you know, working for a company and he wouldn't have the same in Brazil. So the decision was we have to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not that we have to stay, but we kind of like, it's good here. It's like, it's progressing. It's getting better and better, right? Why we would just cut this and go back to Brazil, you know, after three years, we like it. We, we just started and it couldn't be better, I think. And so we stayed. All right. I want to hear from you about sort of you didn't think anything could be Boston. And then you're like, the South is your happy place. And then I want to hear from other people who've lived in other parts of the, so tell, let's hear that. Like what, tell, let's hear that story. What? I want to hear about sort of you, you said that Boston, like you didn't think you would like a place better than Boston, Yes, but yeah. you really like North Carolina. So what, tell us about like, well, what? the weather for starters, right? The weather is so good here. Right, the weather right now is just like it's three it's three weeks ahead of you guys. I mean, like it's already spring. It's warm. We are wearing like short sleeves, you know, outside, and the weather the weather is so good. So Boston for me was was oh my god! You have everything there. You have public transportation. Can go everywhere. You can have many things to do. But like I said, with the family, little kids, like. It's not a, a, to me, unless you go to the suburbs, you know, where you have more space, but Boston itself, the city wasn't, so coming to, to the South, like people are so friendly here and <laughs> the weather is so good. That's why I like it. <laughs> I cried a lot when I left Boston to Connecticut, you know, just like <laughs> <laughs> to the other side. I, I, I said, oh my God, I hate this place. Connecticut is just like trees all over the place. Where's my city? I love the city. <laughs> all right, be careful. Cause if you notice in my screen name, that's where I'm from people. Connecticut's not that No, bad. I know, Connecticut's <laughs> beautiful. No, I learned to love it, of course. <laughs> Um, okay, I want to hear from um, Francesca because I know that you went, did you go from Cambridge to Pittsburgh or was there another stop in between Francesca? No, we, we moved to Pittsburgh directly okay. from, from, from Cambridge. Yeah. And we have been here since, ever since. And do you remember what that transition was like? What, like, was it like sort of more, more or less East Coast or was it, is it very different? Like what's you, what was your son, what's your sense? Of my, my transition was very hard. From Boston to Pittsburgh, it was, was actually harder than moving from Italy to Boston for me. <laughs> but I think it that was due to my like um, situation uh, because when I moved from Italy, um, I was I moved uh, after maybe six months after my graduation, so I was not married at the time. And uh, when I moved, basically was the first time, you know, moving in with my husband, my future husband. So everything was new and we were very looking forward for, to a new life. So basically I was a student in Italy and all my adult, adult life I would live in US. So, um, so it was a happy move from Italy to Boston. Then when we moved to uh, Pittsburgh, uh, my, my son was uh, 11 months old uh, and I moved here without you know, knowing anybody. There was no su such a thing like the spouses and partners, <laughs> you know, that helped you through <laughs> navigating the city and everything. So for me, it was harder actually to integrate because I had a small kid that was, you know, hard to know people and uh, and stuff like that and it took me actually a very long time to get over boston <laughs> at least a year or something yeah and when you moved to pittsburgh what would did you think okay this is like this is whatever permanent or was there an idea of this was going to be for a short period of time what was the no that was uh, permanent i would say because um, we moved here for a job so 
you know, as long as the job is okay and, and it's fine, we, we never thought. Mm -hmm. First of all, we never thought we would be back to Italy mm -hmm. uh, also. So when we came, we knew we were open to, we were open to everything. My husband came to, to Boston for his uh, master and his PhD. Um, and we knew we would not go back to Italy because uh, his major is not something that uh, Italy has job for. Mm -hmm. So we knew we, we would have ended up somewhere else in the world, but we didn't know we would stay in the US. Mm. And then he looked for the jobs, you know, and he had a, a couple of interviews with um, in, in, in Germany, I think, and UK, and then finally decided to stay here. But it was just a matter of deciding which job was better, you know, mm -hmm. for the time being. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you think helped you come to a place of acceptance of Pittsburgh? Was it just a matter of time? Was there something that kind of changed or? Yeah, I think it's a matter of time. And there's actually a saying here in Pittsburgh that Pittsburgh is not a city that it's particularly like, um, how do I say that? Um, you're, you're not fascinated by it, you know, when you see it, <laughs> when you see it. But they say here that Pittsburgh is like a fungi that grows on you. <laughs> and I feel like- Delightful. <laughs> I feel like this is actually true because <laughs> I wouldn't live here. I mean, I, I, I'm so happy now here, you know. <laughs> and we have a, a wonderful life. Uh, and uh, it's like, uh, you know, I, I think it was just a matter of time and getting, you know, to know people, to have uh, your own, you know, routine, new routines and new, new stuff. Yeah. But <laughs> All right, you guys, if anybody moves to Pittsburgh, you're all set. Francesca's going to be your guide for letting this <laughs> fungus grow. Yes, out. yes. <laughs> I would like to jump to Marseille because I think she has to get off in a couple of minutes. So I want to hear a little bit from her um, because you stayed and you stayed at your husband stayed at MIT, correct? Yes, yes, we, we we stayed. I I, I rescheduled my appointment. I had the COVID vaccine second booster, so that's okay. I can stay now. I, oh, I, I, okay. You're you're okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So 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 I'm good. I'm good. But yeah, okay. we we arrived here in 1986, so it was almost 26 years ago, and like everybody else, I think it was. Oh yeah, we're going to stay here for two years and maybe the PhD because you have to do the the test, not to see if you get into the PhD. And then he got into the PhD and like, oh yeah, we're staying here uh, four more years or five more years, and then we'll see what happens. And then here comes the, okay, now he's doing a research uh, position and now he's doing a postdoc position. So so the, the, the steps until finally it was uh, when he when he started working as a professor it's like oh, okay now i can say that we are staying here after i think 11 years or something like that that we were already here so we were in a temporal situation for a long time so we never got uh, like oh no no we, we don't know we're staying so we cannot do this or we're not we're not staying we're, we don't know what's going to happen so after that when he started working as a professor that's when i really felt like this is it, we're we are staying. And then we moved from Cambridge to Arlington, so it was not a big move. <laughs> and so uh -huh. when you say like, are there things like, uh, sort of being in this sort of uncertain, temporary kind of like situation and it never felt like permanent. Yeah. Um, and you said you put off doing things, you delayed doing things. Do you look back and think, oh, I wish I had just done those or did it just, does that still make sense to you? Like that was just the natural yeah. things went? I think the things that we delay in doing, it was trivial, like, well, not so trivial, like, like buying a, a place <laughs> and getting real furniture, <laughs> getting a car. So st stuff like that, like is, the other things, I think we were able to, to try to do as much as possible, but it was hard because we were students. So <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but after after that, it's like okay, now we can really settle. <laughs> <laughs> but this is it's hard because everybody would say how long are you staying two years at least how long are you staying five years at least no like you know we would be up and now it's like 26 years it goes so fast goes so fast and i want to shift the conversation a little bit um because we've talked a little bit about those of you who have kids um has having children how how has having children changed or not changed your relationship with the United States. Um, and I, anyone who wants to jump in on that one is welcome. I, I can say just adding to that point is that for me, it's a different uh, uh, place before kids and after kids, because so many things change before having kids. Like we used to live at MIT and we would have lunch every day. And it was like a honeymoon extended period. <laughs> But then after having kids, it was like the real job and then we moved far away. And so it was like a, like a different place for me. It, it was hard, hard moving out of Cambridge uh, because there was no, 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 that long, you know, to, to go to the meetings and stuff like that. It was, it was like kind of a different place having kids than not having kids and being away from the family. That's also very, very, very hard when you live away from your home country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be. I'm going to jump to Flamiko. So I know that you have kids. And so again, like my question is like, how, how does it feel raising American kids? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So first of all, I, I came to the U.S. in 2001. So it's like 21 years ago. And I was also one of those, you know, spouses where we married because we're coming to the U.S. like a month before he was coming to the U.S. Um, so, you know, we were a newly married couple. We didn't have a kids at the beginning, but then uh, in, in the first two years, I had my first daughter. So I have two daughters. The first one is she's 18 years old and she's a college student. And the second one is 14 years old. She's an eighth grader in middle school. Um, so, like for for us, U.S. is is just the, the country where we're visiting at the beginning uh, because, like you all, we didn't know how long we we're going to stay. Um, he was a postdoc, and he's in the neuroscience field. And usually, postdoc training tends to be very long for for neuroscience field. So he was at MIT total eight years before he had found the independent uh, position. Um, which was in, in Boston area. So that's why we're staying here even now. Um, so once we have kids, uh, the country where we thought we were just visiting is, is, is just no longer a country where we're just visiting anymore because for our kids, it's, it's, they are US citizens. I mean, they do have uh, Japanese citizenship at least until 21 years old, and then they would have to, to choose technically. But, but they are also US citizens. So like my perspective to the US is, is now a little different because like for me, my husband and I probably eventually want to go back to the Japan at some point before we die, uh, maybe after we retire, we don't know. We don't know, but like we have that kind of vision, but for our kids, they don't like, I mean, they, they would love to visit Japan, but they don't necessarily want to live, have a job because like, even though they can speak Japanese because they're, you know, we, 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 we talked in Japanese at home. So they, they trained to, to speak Japanese, but like culturally they have like a U.S. culture, cultural background, and they can speak better English than Japanese. They can read. English better and you know from the old aspect for them this is the country where they would likely want to live of course they don't know if they marry to someone who travel around the world they may end up in living somewhere else but um yeah so I I don't know like someone mentioned about this but I also feel like when they uh go out of college and they become independent, they get married, 
they will likely live in this country, but then we may end up living in a different country where visiting our daughters is not going to be that easy. Um, so when I think of that, um, I get quite sad. <laughs> um, but, you know, I want to respect where our daughters are going to live because that's how my parents respected our lives as well. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I guess it's hard for people who have been living like our lifestyle, <laughs> um, where we have kind of two homes, right? Um, yeah, so that's how I consider this country right now, not not just where I'm visiting anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It, it is a journey. <laughs> it's a process, right? And how that... Yeah. I mean, I just keep thinking about this French woman in the group who she lived in the U S for 15 years, like had her kids here. And then during the pandemic was like, I'm going to move back to France. Right. Mm. And, and just how it's always like uh, her relationship or her understanding of like this connection. And, you know, she could come back for sure. Right. It's just, it's never, it's not, um, it's not a one and done decision. Right. Or the thing mm -hmm. that you have about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to jump to Nina, um, for a minute and I want to hear, I want to sort of talk more about like, um, um, some of the joys, some of the challenges, right. Or what has surprised you about sort of building a life here? And you, did you remind me, did you come knowing you were going to stay? Okay. Yes, so we came here when my husband was just done at MIT, basically. So I moved here when he was finishing up at MIT. Uh, he got a job in Boston. And so I joined basically as an alumni, more or less, because he had finished up MIT and was working. When I moved here, I had decided to wait until it became clear where we would end up. I didn't want to go somewhere for a year and then go back and whatnot. So I decided I was going to wait until he settled and then go. So. We, I moved to Boston in 2006. Uh, I had lived in the US before as an exchange student in Minnesota, which was amazing and probably the best thing I could have done to prepare myself for coming here. Obviously as a you know 19 year old, I had no idea that that was gonna be in my future, but it was really good practice of English speaking and get immersed in the culture with a host family that could kind of help me with that. So I don't know that there were a lot of, I mean, some things surprising, but I felt very um, prepared in that sense mm -hmm. when I came here to live. And for us, it was unclear. I mean, we didn't know it. I mean, we had no plans to go back, but I mean, nothing. We, we had just said, you know, if we, if we aren't doing it now, then we'll never do it. Mm -hmm. So for us, it was kind of an opportunity to say, okay, let's let's try this and see how it goes. And here we are, we decided we like it and we stay. So, but nothing's permanent. So who knows? Do you feel like you could like, you, you still feel like, I, guys, I have to tell you, I remember the first, you know, as many of you know, my husband's from Italy and he moved here to be with me. And I remember the, I don't know, it's interesting. For many, I don't know how many years, I, I would tell myself, you have to be ready for the day that he wakes up and says he wants to move back. Like you have to be ready. Um, I'm seeing some nods, right? I'm just like, and and I. It's funny because I'm like, well, when did I stop thinking about that? Like I can't really recall. But at some point, I was like, all right, I guess we're doing this. Like I guess he's gonna stay, and we're gonna stay. And so, <laughs> but I really every day I was like, all right, all right, come on, all right, it may happen today. Like let's be ready. Um, Jennifer. Yeah, um, I want to say something that Nina made me think. Um, uh, I met Nina when she, she when we, we, we both were at the beginning here. And the idea that she moved everything of her things for, to here in the US, it was shocking me because, as she said, she knew she was coming to stay. And for me, it was something so big. Like she said, No, no, I don't have nothing in Germany. I brought everything here even my school stuff, right? So it was really a big deal for me. So right now you made me think about. Yeah, we had a container that we brought over and we had my husband's company was paying for 
relocation of stuff so we decided and you know we had stuff in our parents basement so you know they were kind of tired of our things sitting there too so and we bought a house here pretty much right after I came so we had room and space so we did it that way and we said you know if we want to return then we'll do the same thing it's fine so it wasn't I mean it it was permanent for the time being but we never felt like it would not be reversible if we chose to like if we decided now we were going to go back to Europe, we could do that. We have no interest, but it would be an option. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's important to know that I, you know, I wouldn't give up, let's say my German citizenship, because I want to have that option to go back if I choose to. Right now, I have no interest to do it, but I like to keep that open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I want to um, pause for a minute um and open it up to um some of the folks who are here who are current members and if you guys have questions um please feel free to put them in the chat or unmute um and we have a nice message from Lee Wan. okay i'm gonna read this out okay uh, Lee Wan, who arrived in the U.S. six months ago, I'm so happy to hear such precious stories. Speaking of children, can you share experience about giving birth and taking care of a baby in the States without any parents or families to support you? I don't have kids yet, but I have this vague fear about raising a baby all by myself. Okay, I see some smiles. Who has something they want to say? Unmute yourself. And all right, Gigi, let's hear it. Okay. Um, well, uh, how I told you when I came here, I was like already nine years uh, married. Uh, and yeah, it's, yeah, definitely have kids here by yourself is not easy. It's hard because you don't have any, anybody to, to support you. You don't have any support. Um, and yeah, I, it's not easy, but, but you, you, you made it. <laughs> like we, you survive and definitely, um, the the relationship that you have with your kids is it's very good because you're everything for them because you are the only family that they have so your family is like very very tight because it's you your husband and your kids that's all you don't have any grandmas you don't have any aunts you don't have nobody and yeah it's like I think that it's hard when they are like, yeah, when they get sick and when they are like babies, but, but you know what? Uh, it goes so fast. They grow so fast. And everybody was telling me that when they were babies and you're like, oh my God, really? But yes, they grow so fast. And in, in, yeah, you open your eyes and they are 16 or they are going to college. And yeah, it's like, you need to, when you have your kid, you focus on your kid and enjoy your kid like every single day because even that like it seems that you will stay like like one year like forever. No, it's not like that. And you will miss each day that when they were baby. So yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you will enjoy your kid more than any other mom in the world because you will be you. <laughs> Nobody else. Roberta. Yeah, I want to argue that, um, yeah, it's true that you won't have your family helping, you know, as uh, it could be in your home country, but you will find an amazing community that will help you. So when I was here, I was saying before, I was having my Cambridge family and, you know, I was living in the, one of the MIT building, 1010, uh, close to 1010 in myself, close to Harvard. And there is an amazing park, Hancock Park over there. So I had the feeling that I was living in the park with a lot of family that they were most from MIT. And, you know, it was making so easy for me to spend my time with my kids and we were helping each other. So even when I, um, I moved back to my country for two years and my kids were still two years and five years, I kind of miss that support because here, you know, you don't have help and a lot of people are in the same situation. So you became each other help. It's really amazing. Like with Spouse and Support, we were having group for the kids. I learned a lot how to do a massage for my baby, you know, <laughs> so many things. And also when you start then, um, so it's true that you don't have 
the help of your family unless they come visit. But it's also true that uh, um, even if you are in your country and you have your uh, someone helping you, you will be the one on first line with the kids. So the important thing is that you or your husband find a good balance that can also be, you know, okay, he has to work, he has to study, but maybe he gave you a couple of hours that you can rest and he's taking over, you know, you find a way. And then another thing, for example, that I did um, that I never thought about, but when my daughter was uh, two years old, with other uh, moms from Spaza San Partner, we did a cooperative childcare. So we were six moms, each one were having one kid, one kid, sorry, and we were doing three morning, two moms, two moms and two moms, just a couple of hours. So we were having a break and we were also learning how to be without the kids because it's also difficult to, to stay far from there, right? When you are it's so intense, but as Giselle said, it's going to be so intense in your teeny tiny family that is actually very nice, but you will have a lot of support. So I really enjoyed um, so Cambridge was really a nice, I, I lived in Boston before the kids, and I think Cambridge is really family friendly. And I really found a lot of uh, um, help and resource. And even I learned, I learned how to do the Easter hunt with the kids, you know, something that I never did. And then you start with school. And when you start with school, you learn a lot because you start to really connect with the American style, American culture, and you meet other people that are maybe from, uh, they are international, maybe not. So it's really a keep growing and learning experience. So it's true, it's intense and it's difficult, but it's, it, it's nice. I like to say it's the hard I choose <laughs> when it's a hard, you know, when I'm, frustrated or it's having a hard day as a parent I'm like okay this is the hard that I choose to do <laughs> um uh Giselle you wanted to add something yeah I want to add something like I feel that if you have kids and you as a foreigner stay in Cambridge I think it's a great idea because there are a lot of people that are from other places uh when we moved to Arlington for me it was like even in the next town it's like another country it's like, what, I was like, this is not the Boston that I know. It's completely different. And I moved to a part of the town that is very towny. So made friends was almost impossible. The people is super close. And I said, okay, when I go to the States, I want to have like a lot of, well, if I stay here, no, I want to be like, I have a lot of American friends and make American friendship. It was almost impossible in the beginning because the people were so close. They, did, they were not interested in being your friends. And in Cambridge, and I was coming from MIT and from Cambridge, that there were a lot of people that were coming from somewhere else. So everybody was way open-minded. And and it depends where do you live in the town, because if you live in Arlington, like near Arlington Center or near like East Arlington, it's another world. It depends which part of the country, the, of the town. But the part of the town that I choose to live, I, in the beginning it was very, very difficult. I was not able, I was not able to understand the people, why they act like that, but they were so cool. They were people that they live, like were they born there and they live there and they went to school there and their kids were going to the same school. So they were like super and went to the same places. So it was like very, very, they were very tight. And the only people that, that are very close, I have a, a core friends that are from the States and are my, my best friends here, like, uh, they were not from here. One is from Ohio, the other is from uh, USA, uh, Virgin Islands, and the other one is from Lexington. They say that is the only local. <laughs> but people from Arlington was like they were so close. So I, I think that it depends experience, and it's amazing that in, in the same like you say, both no, it depends where do you are. It's amazing, and Arlington is like. 15 minutes away from Cambridge. So yeah, it depends. So I, so that makes me jump to a question about making friends with Americans. All right, Adriana's written shit. All right, go, go in front of here. Like I got something to say. I think it's, it's like Giselle said, 
it's very hard because people are tight. They have their own friends. They have their family. They, they are not interested in you. <laughs> so that's why it's really hard. So usually all of my friends usually are from another either state or country usually because then people relate to you. They know how hard it is to be from outside when you don't know anybody and they want to connect. If it's just like, even in Connecticut, and I used to live in Connecticut, everybody was from there. They grew up there. They're like, at the families that they don't have time for you. It's really, really hard. They don't understand sometimes why you don't do certain things, right? You don't behave the same way because you have another culture. So they don't, it's, or maybe we don't understand very well the American culture yet. So you don't, you don't know how to infiltrate and I don't know. It's I mostly all of my friends were from another country, Mo most all the so time. So I just think that's so interesting. Like from South Carolina to Arlington, it's <laughs> right. It's the same thing. Does anyone else want to say something? Have something to say about that, Nina? I have most of my friends now from work, so mm -hmm. it's kind of a community there. And so then my friends come from that environment. Mm -hmm. So I work at the aquarium. There are people that have lived in Massachusetts all their lives, and but a lot of them are open-minded and interested. So I mm -hmm. felt it was easy, but I got a laugh when they talk about how diverse the aquarium is. And I'm like, yeah, you're not. You have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> like everyone's from the US. This isn't diverse. Like you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> so I, 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 I wish I, I wish I could like put them all in the MIT environment for a little while, just so that they understand what diverse means. <laughs> Roberta, did you say the fishes are diverse at the- uh, Yeah, fishes are- Very are diverse. Different. But I agree when you start working, uh, so I agree with Giselle, and also I had the experience that uh, I left Cambridge and for two years went to Italy. When I came back, I moved to Arlington. And I had the experience in Cambridge that every day there was someone new, right? So you were the new one only for one day, maybe two. Here I had the feeling that we were the new one for a while. But uh, I liked anyway the place. And then I started to, you know, with the kids doing activity and the scouts and this and that. And, uh, but it's true when you start working is where well, maybe you connect more, I connected more with more American and also it was again, another experience for me to learn uh, from them um, uh, to better deal, to better know the culture. So, and I had really good friends that I made in my native work. So. Francesca, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just want to say that that happens in Pittsburgh too. I mean, people from Pittsburgh, you know, grow, are born here, grow up here, and they end up staying here. <laughs> and they're very, you know, happy about that. And it's hard to make friends. And uh, it's interesting that one of the American friends that I have, um, it's uh, she's actually uh, a special American I call her because she moved like uh, 13 times in nine years so <laughs> even though she moved only in, within the United States she has the experience you know of going around and meet, having to meet new people and um, so I think that opens up your mind a little bit so it's not I don't think it's a question about being American or not it's more like what experience you had until that point of your life right and if you you know if you've never moved before you might not think you might not think about oh well this person just moved here and might want to you know yeah you don't know the challenges you know that yeah. people are facing so yeah. i think that's a big part of it yeah interesting yeah um other questions that are bubbling up for people? Questions that you guys want to ask each other? I'm curious, I, I don't, is there something that people want to share that we haven't talked about yet? Like something that you'd like people to know that hasn't come up? I, I think I can, share for example for our kids for us it was a transition no like we 
grew up in another country and then we arrived here and uh, that sense like I know this is my home and everything but still like you know it's I, I believe been here more years than I have been living in Mexico but still you have that sensation but for uh, at least for my kids I remember one time my daughter said you know you are raising a Mexican in the U.S. no because we have some value or some some costume some 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 differences right that that we require for example in Mexico when you arrive at a place you greet everybody <laughs> and here no so so stuff like that no little differences and and I never realized that it was true when you, when she said you know you, that I was raising her uh, like a Mexican but she was living here so sometimes I think for 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 the kids can be a little bit um no, not hard, but just just different the, the experience that they. But in the end, it makes them more. Uh, they have a bigger perspective, no? Like, it it it's a good thing in the end. But it's also something that <laughs> take into account when you have kids here. I see. Any other thoughts or questions? I'm gonna, I want to think of a good, I want to do like a round robin. So I'm trying to think of a good question to get one last comment from everyone. But if there are other questions or comments, please put them in the chat or unmute yourself. Hmm. I want to ask you like, what's the hardest thing or the, the, the hardest thing about living here or the most joyful thing about living here um but i suspect a lot of people oh that's interesting that's an interesting question okay there you go paulina let's hear from everybody i wanted to say like what's the hardest thing what's the most joyful thing but we all know that i think i mean tell me if you unmute if i'm wrong you know the hardest thing is like being really far away from the people you love right i mean that's the hardest thing right um i'd like to hear i'd like to hear each one of you answer paulina's question in the chat and also something that you really uh love about living here like love about your town that you're in right now or something about the US culture or something about your American experience. All right. Who need, if you're ready, just raise your hand or I'm going to start calling on people. I'm going to give you a minute. All right, Robbie, let's hear it, Roberta. Yeah, so I would say, I think the difficult part is to be far from your family, especially when you have two years of COVID where you cannot go anywhere. That was really something that you realized, oh, I'm really far. I can't really swim to go back, right? So I have no other way. And the amazing part that something that I keep enjoying is the fact that I can meet people from all around the world. This is what's not going to happen in another place. So this is really something magical. And I have the chance to know more about myself doing this, uh, with this connection. Mm -hmm. So about um, where is my home? Um, I think uh, home is where family is. You know, when I am here with my kids and my family, this is home, where I go, in my home country, that is home anywhere. And um, I do remember one time when my daughter was little that we went to Italy and uh, she, we were in my apartment and she was not feeling home. She didn't want to take off the jacket because she wanted to go home and that was killing me. But then it made me think it's true, you know? That is home, the other one is home. So I feel home in both places. Right now, I really feel that I'm uh, from both places. And we don't have to choose, right? You know, maybe I'm thinking uh, um, like, uh, um, like um, 
who say that she thinks about when she's old to go back to Japan. I'm thinking the same, you know, because even like Marcia said, even if I spent a lot of years here and I became America, but uh, I know that I'm Italian, you know, because that is where I grow, that is my culture, that the way that, as Marcia said, I, I like to greet people and so all the things that you are. Uh, but at the same time, I, I absorbed a lot from the kids. And uh, so, yeah, maybe you don't have to choose. And uh, what I always say to the kids, because sometimes they say, oh, we miss the friends here. And then if we go there, we miss the friends from the other place. And I always tell them, you're lucky. You know how to live in two different places. This is a plus. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Adriana, would you call it home? What have been some of the joys or things? Uh, I think here? definitely here for me. I don't think I, I never thought of going back, mostly because I think here is very secure. I mean, I don't have to worry about, you know, my car getting stolen or you know, my things getting stolen or getting mugged on the street. This is for me was really important. Living in Brazil, I we were always living in fear, and here I don't. And I think this is just amazing. Until today, I was like, I can't believe I'm gonna leave my car here with stuff inside, with like my jacket, and nobody's gonna touch it. To me, this is very important because we every time I go back, I always dread the, the thought of like going back and and oh my god, somebody can come to our car with a gun. Somebody, although here the gun problem is very, you know, it's huge. In Brazil, the odds of it happening to you are much greater. Mm -hmm. So I, I never feel secure there. So I never enjoy much, maybe because where we live in Sao Paulo is so big. So coming here to me, just like living free in a way, not worried about if I left my door open or not, you know, this is for me. So I, I feel home here. Mm -hmm. And of course, my family's there and all that, but I got used to it and... <laughs> Yeah, I like it here I like it here a lot so, because that's and that's a big reason for me. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Francesca. What about you? I definitely feel home here compared to Italy, and I don't have dreams of spending my retire years there. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy here, and I yeah. It's definitely, I don't know how, I mean, it changed. I think it's because, you know, for me, it was a very big distinction between life in Italy as a student and then life in US as an adult. So although I have like good memories, you know, from Italy and, you know, family and friends, you know, from childhood, uh, which, you know, they're good memories, but my adult life is here mm -hmm. and, I want to stay here. And wow, I mean, for those of us, to just make you make me think, Francesca, about like for those of a those of you who have lived in the U.S. for a long time, and I think about this like in terms of my husband, sort of the Italy of the 1990s, right, is not the Italy of today. And so yeah. maybe we could say the same about Brazil or many other places and and Japan. And so like going back is it's a different country and right and that's weird too like yeah yeah, yeah. um toshiko let's hear from you what about your feeling of home and joys of being here oh you're you're you gotta unmute there you go yeah. okay um so <laughs> for me home is to japan and uh uh, the home in St. Louis is like uh, my base. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, my husband thinks differently. He, he thinks that home is St. Louis, where our house is. Um, the life over there is quite different from what I was brought up and uh, from Boston too. So I'm from Tokyo, which is a very, very big city. And Boston, it's size-wise, it's not that big, but still it's a big city. And St. Louis, it's small. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
and we don't have any Japanese food store. So we have to travel long distance to get what I want. And many times there, that's it, you know, I can't get them. And uh, so, and we have to have car to go to anywhere, which is very different from Tokyo and Boston. So <laughs> it took me more than a year to get used to the lifestyle over there. And so still, <laughs> I feel, you know, it's my base, but home is here in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, but what I like about St. Louis, people are very nice, uh, very friendly and uh, caring and, uh, and a lot of nature. <laughs> uh, so there, there are good things too, but sometimes I miss a big city. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's a good thing that we, uh, we get to, get back to Japan at least like twice a year mm -hmm. uh, with my husband's work. So so uh, let's do some shopping, some H Mart yeah. shopping when you come to Boston, okay, Toshiko? Yeah. <laughs> well, then bring an empty bag, bring an empty suitcase so we can fill it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> um, Gigi, tell us about sort of your what's home and the joys of living here for you. Um, I think that yeah, that now is here having so long. So yeah, even when I when I go to Peru, I like that by the third week I feel that I want to go home because here is my house and yeah, yeah, it's, it's weird. Um, and yes, on the other side, uh, you it's not a country that you left 18 years ago. You still idealizing, but your friends they evolved. They have other yeah, they have. They had a life during these 18 years. So everybody changed. <laughs> Everything changed during. So it's not the country that you left. And this, you need to realize that, no? You. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, my life has been. My friends are here now. Like, yeah. Uh, I think that uh, I came here in my 30s. I was like 30 or 31. So I, I feel that it's different when you have come here in your 20s. I have my twin sister. She, lived, she moved to Germany when she was 19 and she studied there. So I feel like uh, her perspective uh, as a foreigner is different than mine. Uh, she, for her it was easier to become like more German than me to become more like American because I was like already, uh, I was already in my 30s. I was like already a, a full grown person. When you are 19, you're still moldable. So, and yeah, this is, I feel that it's completely different your experience if you come here like in your early school and early 20s, or you have here where you are 15, for example. Experience is going to be different. And the feeling that you have is going to be different. I will always be a foreigner. I will always have an accent. Everybody always will ask me, where are you from? And it's, it's hard because, okay, where I am from, I don't know where I am from now because I am, yeah, I am from Peru, but, but, but I, I am from Arlington, I am from Boston, this is home now. So it's hard when the people ask you, where are you from? Because, yeah, I'm from here. I feel that I'm from here. Uh, my kids are like from Boston. They think like a New Englander, the way they act, yeah, the, the the things they like to eat. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. it's weird. <laughs> that question is, I mean, and my husband gets that 25 years. He's been here 26 years. Same question. Where are you from? He's like North Andover. They're like, but no, where are you really from? Right? Every time, every time. Uh, Marcella, tell us about your feelings about the word home and would you describe yourself at home and the joys of being here? Yes, I think like Robbie said, like this is home, you know, I also, I go to Mexico, you know, at least once a year, sometimes twice, sometimes three times during COVID, we didn't go at all. But, but this is, this is my home. We arrived, I was 24, so I was in my twenties and I, I, I I did the citizenship and everything. So I feel like maybe I have two homes <laughs> because when I go to Mexico, it's like 
normal and all my family is there so it's it's very you feel like home but but this is home this is this is my house this is my kids this is this is where we live and this is which i also love i appreciate what what um, adriana said that here everything is so safe you don't worry your kids are out and they're taking the bus and it's fine like the only thing that i worry is that my son he's very fast and like be careful with the cars that's the thing that that's what i worry the most no but that somebody is going to you know do something to him no no so that that is some of the very good things here and also the opportunities that you have here like when i arrived i had an f2 visa so i couldn't work and i couldn't study but but if you if you try if you really work hard on it then you can you can apply to to become a student or or you can start volunteering and then later i think nina no that's how you started i remember you went to the aquarium all the time as a volunteer and now you have your job there so there are so many opportunities here like um, that is one of the so so good things you know being safe uh, opportunity for growth uh, you know, people are amazing. And we have this resource about spouse and partners, which was great when we arrived and didn't know anything. The internet was not that big. <laughs> that, that sounds like, you know, the stone age. <laughs> but but I remember like, I would ask, where can I buy this ingredient no, to make this dish? And they, they, I would get a response. Somebody would help me. So I, there are so many good things about living here. And I guess that's why we are, we are still here. <laughs> You know, um, Paulina has been going through all of the archive material, calling them the archive materials. So I have boxes and boxes of papers from spouses and partners. And recently we found the first site map for the very first spouses and partners website. It was 1997. There was a woman, Danielle. Oh, was, yes. Like, yeah. Do you remember? From and she's Ireland, of course. Yeah. And she's like, kind of want to learn about this HTML thing, this worldwide web. She's like, I'm going to build a website. I'm like, great, great. Let's do it. So, yes. But, amazing. It's amazing. She, she spoke Spanish as well. Very, very well Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nina, let's hear from you. And then we're going to hear from Fumiko and wrap things up. Nina, so feeling like home, what you love here. So definitely split personality on my end. Like I say, I go home and I mean, I go to Germany and I say, I go home after work and I'm here. So I don't, I feel home in both places. And just like David did the question where you're from really just annoys me to no end before it land. A lot of people, I, if you know me, that's fine. I'm happy to talk to you about it. But if it's a stranger in an elevator, I just say we live in Boston and that's the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Like the way you're really from that makes me like so mad. It's like, that's rude to me. That's like not a question you should be asking. But, or if you're really interested, just say. Phrase it differently. Phrase it differently. Like, oh, I hear an accent. Like, uh, did you grow up somewhere else? Right. Right. There's a, a nice way to say this. Exactly. Really from to me is like, you don't belong here. Like, what do you want? Yeah. Yeah. That's like the, what I'm thinking. Maybe it's not implied, but anyways. Um, I would say, like Marcia, the opportunities that we've had here would be very hard to come by in Europe. And also, we don't pay nearly as many taxes as we would. So we have a lot more opportunities to do other things with our money, which is nice. Mm -hmm. um, and, cons. and I mean, it's a choice, right? We're here because we choose to be. So, mm -hmm. you know. Right. And then all the different food options we have. Like Germany is much more limited what you can find. Like we didn't have a Japanese restaurant until I moved out away from my hometown. So nice. here I feel like there's way more and it's more diverse in general, like Boston or Cambridge, you can meet people from everywhere. And so I felt like it was more, yeah, there's just different like opportunities to get to know, not just where you are currently living, but people from other places and then the food from other places and a little bit of the culture. So I think you have more opportunity here to kind of broaden your horizon than I would back home in Germany. Thank you. And Jacqueline, thank you for your comment in the chat about feeling like you have two homes and the four seasons. Ooh, I love me some four seasons. I know a lot of people and spouses and partners don't, but 
love it. Um, Fumiko, let's hear from you last. We're talking, uh, uh, the question in the chat was, would you call the US your home now? And then uh, what has some have been some of the really positives and joys about living in the US for you? I mean, I, I think I would feel pretty much the same way as everybody else has been feeling about, you know, the home, like we, we feel home, like both country as a home at this point, because like Japan is where my uh, sister lives, my parents lives, my husband, brother and his parents live. So all the relatives and someone who are very important live and um, it, it, that's where we grow, grew up. And, you know, so it, it's, it's definitely home. I mean, I mean, if we go back now we can immediately adapt to the culture and we can just live, you know, as if we have been living there. But at the same time here, you know, we have, we've been living here for 21 years. We have kids here who are raised in this country and my husband and I both have a job and, um, you know, we bought a home and uh, we have friends and, you know, I have coworkers that I have worked for 20 years. So it's definitely home too. So I, I guess for me, um, you know, I can't choose either one as a home because both are home and maybe I should feel lucky to have two countries as a home. <laughs> Yeah. but but it's it, you know it's it's not easy but I just try to feel that way so that uh, I wouldn't have to choose I, I just accept the fact that I cannot choose and I would accept both as my home yeah and um you know about about the joy of living in this country and when I think about joy like for us it it came after we went through all the challenges and difficulties. Um, I mean, it is some, you know, some way it's, it's fun to live in this country where there's a lot of nature, a lot of place to hike, you know, there's a lot of fun stuff, but for us, like for me, especially like when I came to this country with my husband, I had nothing. I didn't have any job. I didn't know what to do. Uh, I had no idea where I'm going. My husband was too busy. He was in the lab from morning till night. I had nothing to do. Um, so it was very important for me to find my own life in this country, um, especially when I didn't know how long, how many years I was going to stay. Um, but luckily, I was able to find a job uh, at MIT, where I have actually been working for 20 years uh, now. And, and um, you know, I, I think one of the questions was, how was the experience when, when we had the kids, like without any help from our parents, because our parents are all in, in our home country, right? Um, I had my mother came to help me out just for a month uh, when my daughter was born. Um, but then she had to go back because the visa was only for, you know, for like up to um, 90 days. But my, my mom had to take care of my father in Japan. So she only stayed a month. And after that, we're all by ourselves. So I guess the joy part is that we really built our family bond. Like family means my husband and I and the kids. So we call it as like a team. We're a team futai. And because we have to figure out everything by ourselves, we have to help each other. We have to support each other. Whenever we make a decision, we have to communicate. We have to discuss. So we're in the position where we have to have a good relationship in order to survive. And, and, you know, as you, many of you know, postdocs are very busy. They're basically stuck in the lab and they can't really, uh, they don't have much time, but my husband had to help me out because I had to go back to my work after three months and we had to find a daycare to put our child. But at the night, somebody has to put the baby in the bath, uh, change the diapers, feed the milk, cook the dinner, you know, so like, you know, and there was no one who can help besides my husband. So 
we had to um, work as a team. So I feel like if we lived in Japan, uh, we couldn't have built such kind of family bond and family relationship. And I, I think that the fact that we're all by ourselves that made us stronger. <laughs> and of course, like everybody else said, um, we're, we lived in Cambridge community. So it's very friendly. Uh, we had a great neighbor and my kids played, you know, had a play date uh, every day. And when we go to the park, there's a lot of people where I can meet with anyone every day. Um, so that's community wise. Yes, it's very helpful. It was awesome. But at the end of the day, when you go home, there's just my husband who has to help me. And um, so I guess that was a really great part of living in this country where um, we put ourselves in a situation we, we have to help each other, <laughs> I think, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, I've definitely heard that story before, <laughs> right? That it's just like, what a bonding mm -hmm. uh, uh, experience for a couple and, and, you know, pros and cons about in-laws, you guys, <laughs> pros and cons. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. I will leave mm -hmm. it at that. Mm -hmm. uh, and I also want to say something that I always um, say with my husband is like, there's no perfect place. Right? Like, that's how I kind of come down to it. Right? Like, it's just like, if we were to live in Italy, we, you know, some things would be good. Some things wouldn't be great. We live here. Some things are good. Mm -hmm. Some things aren't great. Whatever. Right? Like, we just make it work. I mean, though, I always say Hawaii might be a perfect place. I don't know. Um, but you know, if you find it, find that perfect place, let me know. Um, guys, this was delightful. Um, Paulina, let's stop the recording. Um, I, wow.